What's up everybody and today we are reacting to the SCP Foundation Explained. This is by Infograph. Um, people are telling me to watch more of these SCP videos and I thought it would be wise to go back and watch something explaining what it is so that I have a bit more context when I watch what looks like to be the biggest one which is this Overlord one. Um, so we will get to that probably tomorrow if not Thursday. Um, but for now, I want to just find out more and understand it a little bit better so that I can react to it with a better understanding about what the hell is going on. Because last time I watched it and I'm just like, what is going on? Like, I have no idea. So I'm going to watch this with you guys and we'll go from there. And maybe, maybe it might be something we watch a lot in the future. Uh, but before we get started, as per usual, members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for you members. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do i really do appreciate it links down below to all the usual stuff instagram discord twitter website merch my second channel which guys today we got finished filming the next episode of the dungeons and dragons campaign if you haven't watched that and you're into DD, go and watch it also this week coming up we've got some cyberpunk gonna be on there so go and go and sub to the second channel it is so worth it all right guys uh, my podcast, which should be up this weekend. If not, it'll be up next weekend because of internet issues. And uh, my Twitch stream, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, and again, next week's going to be a big day for Twitch streaming because we've got a uh, new Warzone. We've got Cyberpunk. We've got uh, the Game Awards. A bunch of really cool stuff we're going to be streaming. Um, but for now, let's shut up and let's react to... SCP Foundation explained by the infograph. I will leave a link down below to the original video. Um, so yeah, let's just go from there, guys. In an undisclosed location, a woman is being tortured. The methods of her abuse are too horrific to be described, and her okay. torturers are death row prison inmates, the absolute worst of the worst. This okay. woman's torture is constant, and procedures are put into place to make sure she never becomes accustomed to the pain. If ever her torturers express sympathy toward their victim, their superiors will have them removed and replaced. If they what? try to rescue her or put her out of her misery, they themselves will be shot without hesitation. The woman. What is this? That's, that's terrible. That's terrible. What is this? Being tortured is known only as SCP-231-7. And worst of all, she's pregnant. The cause of her eternal torture? The SCP Foundation. And you'll be shocked to learn that when all is said and done, these are the good guys, because if they ever stop their brutal treatment of SCP-231-7, a treatment codenamed Procedure-110 Montauk, she'll give birth to a creature that will destroy the world as we know it. This is just one of the many examples of the objects and entities under the watchful eyes of the SCP Foundation. A mysterious- So, so, there, this is one of many stories, I'm guessing, about why they're protecting the planet. They have to do horrible things to protect the planet? That's kind of weird. Examples of the objects and entities under the watchful eyes of the SCP Foundation, a mysterious group that strives to achieve greater good by any means necessary. And we do mean any. What? The greater good. <laughs> if you've not watched Hot Fuzz, is that what SCP is in Hot Fuzz? The greater good? <laughs> you're about to hear is above classified. And be warned, what is heard can never be unheard. Okay. Unless, of course, the Foundation gets its hands on you. So, what is the SCP Foundation? Okay. In the most basic sense, the group's mission statement hmm. is right there in the SCP acronym. Secure, contain, protect. It's the task of the Foundation to, in their own words, contain anomalous objects, entities, and phenomena. Things that don't make sense. Things that don't belong. Things that simply don't fit in with our perception of reality. Okay, so this is really gone from what I thought was some sort of military thing to now this kind of fantasy, sci-fi, kind of weird horror kind of thing. Kind of like X-Men. But not X-Men. Like the finding mutants and weird people and containing them. This is strange. Okay, okay, let's go. Some on. things that pose an existential threat to all human life. They refer to these contained anomalies as SCPs, each of which is accompanied by a number. This is a broad umbrella, as an SCP can range from benign or even actively helpful to downright apocalyptic if ever released. Much like the infamous Men in Black often reported by witnesses in connection with alien sightings, the Foundation works in secret to maintain a sense of normalcy at all costs, knowing the chaos it would cause if any of the anomalies 
they're harboring ever become public. Take, for example, SCP-500. To the untrained eye, the object is just an unassuming prescription pill bottle, the kind you'd see in medicine cabinets the world over. But the pills in this humble bottle are unlike any earthly medicine. They can cure quite literally anything, from cancer to a cold, within two hours. But at the time of this writing, there are only 47 pills left. The power to cure all disease, a privilege denied to even the richest and most powerful in society. A veritable holy grail. Can you imagine the violence and horror that would break out in trying to obtain them if their existence ever became public? Okay, so this is actually really, really cool. So each kind of cell number has a specific thing in that is uh, that could destroy the world, change the world, uh, anything, anything in the above. Um, so anything weird that the world has not seen before. That's really cool. That's a really cool setup for some great stories. I am very interested in more of this. The SCP Foundation works in secret because the collective mind of society just couldn't handle the knowledge of what they're dealing with. They work with the approval of all world governments, effectively placing them above international law. Essentially, there is no human authority above the Foundation because without the Foundation's work, there would be no humans left to govern. To understand the basic operations of this above top secret organization, we need to delve a little further into that secure, contain, protect slogan. Secure refers to the Foundation's practice of constant global surveillance and observation in order to detect and intercept anomalous activity before it can interact with civilians or rival groups. Contain involves preventing the effects or influence of the anomaly from spreading by either, in their own words, relocating, concealing, or dismantling such anomalies, or by suppressing or preventing public dissemination of knowledge thereof. The Okay, so what I'm getting from this is a is very much like a uh, a Lovecraft vibe, where uh, for those of you who don't know Lovecraft, obviously H.P. Lovecraft obviously wrote stuff like the Cthulhu and all that lot, and it was so well rounded. His own, he basically wrote his own mythology, and it was so good that some people started to believe it, and it it, it gives me that vibes where they've made this kind of mythology, this kind of secret organization which kind of blends reality and conspiracy theory in one where it's like these stories are they really are they real is it a conspiracy theory but they're at, obviously they're, they're not real but like it blends that kind of emotional connection to it where you there's that part of you where it's like is it real is it real is it real and that's what hp lovecraft first did and it seems like that's the vibe i'm getting from with this which is brilliant the latter can involve practices such as oh. using advanced chemical compounds or technologies to delete and then rewrite the memories of infected civilians or even committing mass murder if necessary to cover their tracks. The SCP Foundation has in the past wiped out entire towns of innocent oh. civilians to prevent dangerous information about the SCP spreading beyond their control. They can take lives at their own discretion and consider almost any crime to be permissible when the alternative is Armageddon. And finally, Protect pertains to all operations meant to protect mankind from the SCPs, up to and including neutralizing and destroying them when possible. Some SCPs, such as the infamous SCP-682, a nigh-indestructible genocidal reptilian, have proved to be almost impossible to destroy. Research is ongoing in many cases, as the Foundation explores any and all possible methods of reducing the threat of more dangerous SCPs. So what I want to know then is, where are all these SCP stories coming from? Um, are these just, you know, internet stories that people have wrote themselves and have just slowly but surely kind of gathered up and, and become like one big mythology? Or is this something that one organization, one website or one company is pumping out these stories um, just for the fictional fun of it? I'm wondering where, where, where are these coming from? These In order to help them categorize the thousands of strange and horrifying anomalies under their watch, the Foundation has created a system that organizes the SCPs based on the difficulty of containing them. The first of the primary object classes is SAFE, pertaining to SCPs that require little, if any, resources to safely and properly contain. Examples include the previously mentioned SCP-500 pill bottle and SCP-999, a benevolent blob of gelatinous orange matter. SCP-999 has a playful, almost dog-like personality and causes feelings of happiness and euphoria in whoever or whatever it touches. It's even been used by the Foundation as a pacification tool to reduce aggression in other SCPs. The second primary object class is Euclid. 
I love that one. Which refers to any anomaly that requires more resources to contain completely or where containment isn't always reliable. This is the broadest SCP class, and the majority of sentient, sapient, or autonomous anomalies fall into this category. A Euclid SCP might be something as huge, sprawling, and bizarre as SCP-3008. This SCP appears to be a kind of anomalous pocket dimension hidden inside an IKEA superstore, which is not only significantly larger on the inside by approximately 10 kilometers, but also contains bizarre, <laughs> faceless entities which can become hostile under the right conditions. A That's hilarious! Who, who's coming up with these stories? The Euclid SCP can also be something as seemingly innocuous as SCP-294, which appears to the untrained eye to be a standard coffee vending machine. However, unlike any other coffee machine, the input system on SCP-294 is a QWERTY keyboard. This SCP can manifest any liquid typed in on the keyboard, from standard drinks like coffee and beer to more esoteric compounds like sulfuric acid and disease-infected human blood. During extensive tests, one subject requested the perfect drink and was given an odorless, lavender-colored liquid. After consuming the liquid, the subject went into a state of euphoric shock. The subject later committed suicide, leaving a note which read, I'm sorry, but at this point everything's just one big letdown. Sadly, <laughs> subjects dying during- <laughs> That's amazing! During tests is not uncommon. The SCP Foundation essentially has limitless resources, including access to countless disposable workers and test subjects. The most common of these are so-called D-Class personnel, which are death row inmates conscripted for the purposes of often lethal SCP experimentation or containment. The next primary object class is Keter, described by the Foundation as anomalies that are exceedingly difficult to contain consistently or reliably, with containment procedures often being extensive and complex. This can either be due to being an extremely volatile and dangerous anomaly or just one that seems to defy known laws of physics or reality, and is thus extremely difficult to understand or contain. The SCP Foundation has a vast number of secret facilities across the globe, and while the Keter-class SCPs are not nearly as common as the Euclid-class, they consume a great deal more resources to safely contain. One particularly okay. terrifying Keter-class SCP is SCP-354, colloquially known by the Foundation employees as the Blood Pond. This SCP is a large pool of non-biological red liquid discovered in North Canada that appears to be a kind of interdimensional primordial soup. What makes this SCP particularly hard to contain as well as extremely frightening is the fact that hostile entities periodically emerge from the pond and must be neutralized before they can escape the containment area. So how do they contain that pond? They build like a facility around it or something? This is fast. I am loving. For those who don't know, I'm really into fiction. I, I read a lot of fantasy and sci-fi and stuff like that. Um, however, I've been slowly dipping my toes in horror um, a lot, and this is tickling that itch, scratching that itch, not tickling it. It's giving a little tickle as well, but it's scratching that itch, guys. And I love this. I love this. I want to know a lot more about this. I want to dive deep into this, guys. Let me know all your resources in the comments section down below. These entities have included a floating black sphere that can fire concentrated beams of deadly radiation, a 15-foot tall reptilian humanoid that seemed immune to gunfire, and okay. a homicidal metallic humanoid nicknamed the Terminator by Foundation personnel. The most highly classified primary object class of all is Thaumiel, which consists of SCPs used to contain other SCPs. This can range from SCP-7000-J, a book of Latin incantations bound in dinosaur skin that can summon various other entities, all the way to SCP-4006, which is the entire state of Massachusetts. Thaumiel class SCPs are the most bizarre and esoteric of the anomalies. How is it the whole state of Massachusetts? ...is dealt with by the Foundation, but thankfully, they often pose less of an active threat than many of the Euclid or Keter-class SCPs. Finally, as mentioned earlier, sometimes the SCP Foundation deems an anomaly too dangerous to contain and just needs to destroy it entirely. A terrifying example of a neutralized SCP and a perfect illustration for just how strange and abstract the anomalies dealt with by the Foundation can be is SCP-4991. This SCP manifested as a series of bizarre posts across a number of websites about an apocalyptic event that seemed to be occurring on a different layer of reality and seemed to indicate that a kind of deadly parasitic and carnivorous insect was spreading like wildfire across the globe causing death and destruction in their wake. The SCP Foundation neutralized SCP-4991 by tracking down, containing, and erasing all infected posts across Whoa. the internet before it could spread too far. Who knows what would have happened if the Foundation hadn't intervened? As is often the case with SCPs, it's probably best just not to think about. 
Guys, I want to dive deep into this. This is really something that I could get addicted to reading stuff like this. Oh dear, guys. Oh dear. You may have, you may have gifted me something that I will become obsessed with. The actual structure of the SCP Foundation is surprisingly transparent, with personnel classification levels ranging from Class A to Class E. Class A personnel are considered vital to the strategic operations of the Foundation and therefore are not allowed to be in direct contact in any way with any of the SCPs due to potential risks. Class B personnel are vital to local Foundation operations on SCP test sites and are only permitted to be in contact with SCPs deemed to be relatively safe. Class C personnel are field agents that have far more direct contact with the SCPs and often put themselves at great risk in doing so. Class D <laughs> personnel, as previously mentioned, are essentially cannon fodder thrown into the jaws of death to discover more about the more dangerous anomalies on the SCP roster. And that finally, one. Class E personnel are personnel that have been already exposed to the potentially dangerous effects of an unknown anomaly. Class E personnel are placed into quarantine until they're deemed fit to return to work or terminated, depending on the results of their observations. Huh. In terms of actual roles in the SCP Foundation, the top of the pyramid are the O5 Council members, Class A personnel who have total clearance and oversee all Foundation operations. Below them are Site Directors, who manage the various physical Foundation facilities across the globe. Who's come up with all this? Who has come up with all this stuff? This is brilliant. Is this just a collective of people on the internet that have slowly built this up? Because if it is, it's genius. And it's, like I said, it's very Lovecraft. It's like modern Lovecraft. It's brilliant. It wouldn't surprise me if there's some Lovecraft monsters in this, to be honest with you, like, like the Cthulhu and all that lot. And report back to the O5 Council. On site, researchers and containment specialists work together to better understand and combat the anomalies being housed at their particular facility. They're kept safe by the hard work <laughs> of veteran security and tactical response officers, ready to lay down their lives to prevent more dangerous SCPs from ever escaping and reaching developed areas. In the event that an SCP does breach containment and escape, or a new one is discovered, field operatives are dispatched by the Foundation to get the situation under control. These will consist of field agents who already operate across the globe, and specialized mobile task force operatives. The SCP Foundation has eyes and ears everywhere. Their organization is influential and is embedded in every facet of society, ready to strike and suppress an emerging anomaly before any ripples of its existence can reach the wider world. Love it. Even here, we've only love really it. scratched the surface of the SCP. I love it. I love the fact that it's like, it, the, the idea of the SCP borderlines a conspiracy where they're trying to stop people from learning about, I, oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. Foundation's extensive and frankly mind-boggling global and historical operations. There's plenty of information about the Foundation online, many of which people assume is pure fiction, but wouldn't that be the perfect cover for a real secret organization <laughs> wanting to cover its tracks? Exactly! That's hilarious! That's brilliant, because like I said, like I said, they're doing that thing in the back of your mind where it's like, is it fake? Is it not fake? Like, th that's exactly what um, Lovecraft tried to achieve with some of his stuff, and, and that's as the quote says, the greatest this. trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Ultimately, the uh -huh. SCP Foundation is on the side of mankind, but that uh -huh. doesn't mean it'll always act in our best interests. After all, if it means preserving the peace and getting another anomaly under wraps, the Foundation won't hesitate to terminate you and everyone mm -hmm. you know without a second thought. Whether you'd want to face off against the Foundation itself or one of the anomalies they wish to contain is ultimately up to you, but trust us, neither would end well for you. Oh, speaking of which, there's another SCP we forgot to mention that's quite literally unspeakable. SCP-2521 is a creature that's made entirely of strange black tendrils that envelop and smother the creature's prey. No written records of the creature exist outside of pictograms because it immediately attacks and consumes any information produced about it. This includes speech, as the creature will appear and consume anyone who- Oh god. Oh no. It's- it's here. It's- that reminds me of um, a book called The Name of the Wind. There's a group of bad guys in there where if there's any information or anything wrote or said about them, they go and hunt them. And therefore, no, everyone thinks it's like a myth and not real. Brilliant. Brilliant. Here, help me! Ah! Pay no mind to what you just witnessed. I, the infographics show narrator, am perfectly fine. We now <laughs> recommend you watch Russian Sleep Experiment Explained and how a meme, Slender Man, became real. Pay no more thought to what you've just seen or heard. Thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. I am, I am all over this. I want to know more. 
this guy's got a lot of videos. Of, oh, look at all these different videos of all the SCP. I want to watch them all. Let me know in the comments your favorite ones. We're going to start reacting to them. I have a feeling. I have a feeling I'm going to get addicted to this. This is this is literally my cup of tea, guys. This is something I would love. What have you done? Why have you shown me this? I'm going to get obsessed, guys. I'm going to get obsessed. I really am. Members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. Links down below to all the usual stuff. Instagram, Discord, Twitter, website, merch. I'll also leave a link to the OG video. Please go and like and subscribe to the infograph. They're awesome. Um, links down below also to my second channel, which is booming right now with awesome content with D&D, Cyberpunk, and all that good stuff. Uh, my podcast, which should be up this weekend, if not next weekend. And my Twitch stream, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Let me know in the comments your videos of scp that you want me to get into your websites your law your information everything let me know in the comments down below i will be reacting to overlord very soon it is a biggish video 35 minutes i wonder if i can react to that in all one video i'm not sure however it looks dope so i'm going to be reacting to it until next time guys i love you all have a wonderful day goodbye